Alright guys, welcome back to the channel where today I'm going to be walking you through my GM mode in WWE 2K22. Now we're going to pick this up where we've already picked our GM, which is Stephanie McMahon, and we've already picked our show as we've gone for Smackdown, therefore our first task will be to draft our show's roster. So before we make our first pick, let's go over the rules for the WWE Draft, where each GM will start with a budget of $2,750,000. GMs will take turns drafting one after the other, starting with player one. There will be eight rounds of drafting. After the eighth round, drafting becomes optional and GMs can opt out or draft until they're out of cash. Along with the rules, we also have a tip that GMs can press the R3 button to get recommendations on who to draft and we can also press square to get more information about a certain superstar. So here you are on the main draft screen where we're going to pick our first superstar and we're going to go with John Cena. So Cena is our first pick, it then switches to Monday Night Raw who've gone with Brock Lesnar and then it's back to us to pick our second star and it's basically going to go like this until we've picked enough superstars to fill out our roster. So that's the first picks now locked in. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to let the draft picks play out in the background so you can see who gets drafted next. However, rather than focus on the picks, I'm going to tell you a little bit about GM mode and specifically how you get to this point when you first start out. So we already know that there are five options to choose from when selecting a GM. We have Stephanie McMahon, Shane McMahon, Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville, along with the option of a custom superstar whereby you can create your own custom character like a Teddy Long or a Mick Foley. Along with the option of selecting your own GM and your own show, you can also select the opposing brand where again you can choose from Raw, Smackdown, NXT or NXT UK and you can also choose a GM to be your opponent. Along with these options, you've got AI difficulty, which you can set to easy, normal or hard. You've got the duration of my GM mode, which is 15, 25 or 50 weeks. And then you've got a draft pool option that allows you to go through the roster and select everyone that you want to appear in GM mode. Finally, the last option that you have is draft settings. And this allows you to either manually pick the draft like we are here, or if you want to save time, then you can have the computer do this for you. So that's a little bit on the setup of my GM mode, however getting back to the draft, if we press R3 then this will take us to the recommendations section which is on the bottom left hand side where we can quickly select any of the recommended superstars like Ivar, Xavier Woods, Candice LeRae or Tamina. Meanwhile on the right hand side we have the roster that we've chosen so far where we have the likes of Roman Reigns, John Cena, Finn Balor, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley and Carmella and we can scroll up and down this list using R3. We also have a roster breakdown which tells us how many heels, how many faces we have, males and females and a breakdown of all the different classes. Now in regards to classes, the top section of the screen which features a preview of the superstar, this gives us a breakdown of that superstar's class as well as some hints as to how we should book them with the general rule being that specialists will go up against anyone Giants are best with cruiserweights, fighters are best with bruisers and you're best off having fan favourites taking on rule breakers as these will give you the best results. You can also mix up these so if you have a fan favourite giant then you're best pairing these up with a rule breaking cruiserweight. By following those options those will tend to give you the best results and help you put on some of the best matches. Before we finish up the draft, something else that I want to point out is the stamina and the popularity column as while this may seem low for certain superstars, it's actually something that you can adjust before you jump into the draft. During the options for the draft pool, when you select all the superstars that will be available to draft, there's actually the option to change any of that superstar's options so you can increase their popularity or decrease it, you can do the same with the stamina and you can also change their role from heel to face as well as their class. One of the cool things about this is that it also works in regards to custom superstars, therefore if you want to include a superstar that isn't in the game by default, you can create that superstar and then import that superstar into the draft pool and you can go through and choose whether or not that superstar is a legend and how popular they are. So if you have a custom superstar that you are including and it is someone that is a massive name that should be at the top of the draft then you can actually set that up rather than the computer just generating a certain popularity and being stuck with it. Getting back to the draft, we're now up to round 13 where we've already amassed quite a list of superstars and at this point we can actually choose to end the draft and make do with the superstars that we've got 
as our budget is already down to 114,000 and it's at that point where you should really start to think about saving some of that money so that you've got it for setting up your show as if you keep the money it'll allow you to put on better matches like TLC, Hell in a Cell, Extreme Rules or Tables as those kind of matches will generate a lot bigger ratings than standard singles or tag matches. So with our budget in mind, we're going to pick our final superstar as Tyler Bate, which then gives us this completion screen showing off our general manager, our show and some of the superstars. Now because we've used our budget but Raw still have a budget, they can actually continue on so they've got some extra picks in there and more superstars on their roster. With the drafts complete, we now get to have a quick recap of everyone that was drafted where you can scroll up and down and see which superstars were drafted to which brand. With the draft now complete, we enter the first week of JM mode as we're just four weeks away from the first pay-per-view, which is WrestleMania Backlash. So heading into week one, the first thing that we're met with is our inbox, and we have Shane McMahon here, the opposing GM, letting us know that he plans to take Raw to the top level. Along with the message from Shane, we also have a message from the commissioner, Triple H, who is the person that oversees the mode, and Triple H notes that tonight's show is the debut show and that he has high hopes for it, to which we can then reply with a multiple choice answer. After replying to Triple H, the first task that we have is to select our default champions, therefore we're going to go with Roman Reigns as the SmackDown Men's Champion and Bianca Belair as the Women's Champion, with this adding 10 plus popularity to both stars. With the default champions now set, we're taken to the book show screen where we have the option to set an opening match, a mid card match and a main event as well as two promos. So let's jump into the opening match where we have the option to set a one on one or a tag team match, therefore we're going to set this up as a one on one female match and we're going to do Bianca Belair versus Carmella. In terms of match types, if you want to play a normal match then there is no cost to this, this is free, however we're going to set this as a tables match at the cost of $5000 as this will help to get a better rating for the match overall. In terms of interference, we'll leave this off, we do have the option for a title match as Bianca is our champion but again we'll also leave this one off but we'll go ahead and save it and we'll move on to the mid card. For the mid-card match, we have exactly the same options that we had for the opener, so we've got one-on-one -on -one or tag team, so again we'll set this up as a one-on-one -on -one contest and we'll do Lacey Evans against Rhea Ripley, however this time we'll leave this as a normal match as that won't cost us anything. As for the main event, in this example we're going to go with a tag team match and we're going to feature our champion Roman Reigns, it's always good to keep your champion on the show as that keeps them happy as the superstar's morale will actually go down if you don't use them. So for this option, the pairing that we've gone for is Roman Reigns and Shelton Benjamin as they take on John Cena and Finn Balor as this match has a good mix of styles, although if we go back in we can actually change it, so we'll change Shelton Benjamin over to Xavier Woods and that puts a heel and face on both sides along with a fighter and a bruiser which should make for a better rating. We'll also set this one as a tables match which is again $5,000, however what we're going to do differently here is we're going to set up interference to give the crowd something to talk about, therefore we're going to select Ivar to interfere in this match and he's going to attack the champion which is Roman Reigns. Alternately, if we didn't want to have a superstar run in, we could also set the general manager to perform a run in, therefore we could have actually had Stephanie run down to ringside and get involved. Before we save our show and we load into it, the next thing that we want to do is check the other tabs, starting out with the journal tab as this will include the commissioner goal from Triple H, where you can see that this week Triple H has asked us to book our least popular superstar for a match. If we complete that goal, then the reward that we'll get is a health spa 3 card which will send the chosen superstar to a top spa to recover 18 more stamina, however the superstar that we use it on won't be available to appear on that show. Now that we know of the commissioner goal, let's go back and change the main event. We're going to keep it a tag team match, but we'll set Roman Reigns pairing with the least popular superstar, which is Tyler Bate, and then we'll have them go up against John Cena and Finn Balor. So let's set this one back to a tables match and then we'll save it as our main event. With our new main event in place, they should complete the commissioner goal so that we get that reward and in hindsight it is a good practice to check the journal first as you should always check to see what the goal is this week and then book your matches based around that if you want to obtain the reward. 
At this point in the show, we have all of our matches set up, but the next thing we can do is set up a promo, of which there were various promo types, such as self-promotion and call-out. We're going to go with the call-out option, and we're going to set Xavier Woods to be the person calling someone out, and the person that he's going to call out is going to be Roman Reigns, as this will give a chance of setting up a rivalry between the two for the championship. With the promo booked, the next thing to do is check the show logistics tab, where the first thing that you're notified with is the latest unlocks, as in week 1 these are the unlocks that you'll get, with the arenas including the high school gym and the concert hall. Cycling through the options, the first thing that you can customise is the arena, which by default is set to the high school gym, as that arena is free to use and it won't cost you a penny, however we did unlock the concert hall, so if we wanted to we could switch to that, however it will cost us more money to do that, although the benefit is that we may sell more tickets and therefore earn more revenue. As for the other arenas, these unlock throughout the weeks, all the way up to the final week, which in this playthrough is week 11, in which you can earn a bigger arena like that of Wrestlemania. Along with the option of choosing an arena, you can also customise the crew, with the road crew being the free option that gives a show and quality increase of 5%, however other options that are unlocked throughout the weeks and available to purchase will see more show quality added, especially if you complete objectives such as booking special match types. In a similar manner, players can also set the level of special effects that are available and advertisements such as superstar signings or cameos, with these all adding to the cost, however in return for your money you will see an increase to the show's quality as well as a chance to gain more fans. Switching over to the Manage Roster section, here we can manage our roster, including the option to release stars, we can sign free agents which includes enhancement talents, or if we're looking for some star power and we have the budget to do it, then we can also sign legends like The Rock or Goldberg, as this is a great way to help boost your ratings, especially if you're heading into a pay-per-view. Before we save our show and we head over to the match card, the last thing that we want to check is the power card tab, as in here we have different boosters that we can use to increase the ratings of our matches. Some examples here are the 2 Extreme Power card, which when used will increase the rating for Extreme Rules matches on the show and therefore help you get a better rating. The same can be said for the little bit of TLC power card as that will increase the rating of a TLC match with other power cards helping injured superstars, boosting the show's ratings or you can also get power cards that will affect the other show such as stopping them from booking their top superstars. So that's an overview of all the different tabs and what you need to do before moving on to your show but with all that done let's confirm our booking and we'll head into the first week's match card. So here we are on the main match card screen where we have the option to simulate, spectate or play matches. If we choose simulate then we'll get a simple 1, 2, 3 to determine the winner, whilst the spectate option will allow you to watch the match at ringside where you can cycle through all the different camera angles like you can in the highlight reel, however you can't actually get involved, it's simply watching the match. Along with those options, you also have the option to play in the match yourself, however according to Lionel Jinx, it doesn't sound like the match rating will improve when playing matches, as it seems to be determined much more on the types of superstars that go up against each other and their popularity, as opposed to what actually happens during the match. For that reason, I always tended to stick to the simulate option, which would simulate a winner, as it was a lot quicker to get through the card and you could just focus on the rivalries that you were setting up. Once you've completed a match, either by simulating it or playing it, then you'll get the viewer's match rating, which in this case for the main event was great with 3.5 stars, and it then notes whether or not a rivalry has started and the level that that rivalry is at. As you continue to play through the weeks and you book the same stars in matches, then the level of the rivalries will go up, which in turn will help lead to a better match rating and a better audience score. With our match card complete, we switch over to the Raw brand, as we see their card features an opening TLC match of Candice LeRae against Dana Brooke, they have an advertising promo featuring Mandy Rose, and then they have a mid-card tables match between Austin Theory and Pete Dunne, as well as a main event Extreme Rules match which is for the WWE Championship between Brock Lesnar and R-Truth. So they've actually spent a lot more on their show by putting on TLC, Tables and Extreme Rules matches which could work in their favour as special match types do tend to get better audience scores, 
However, at the same time, because they've spent a lot of money, it will go against their budget and it doesn't guarantee a good rating because it all depends on the types of stars going up against each other. So if those classes don't mix well, then they won't get a great score for that match. With both shows now complete, here we get a breakdown of the ratings where it actually seems as though both shows have drawn with each other as the opening contests both did 2.5 stars, the mid card 2 stars and the main event 3.5 stars. Along with the ratings, we also get some feedback where it notes that the booking here was good as the opening and main event were the highlights of the show and that is basically what you're going to aim for as your first match and your last match should always be the biggest. Following the rating screen, we get a full show breakdown where we go over the viewership and the revenue that we've earned. Under viewership, we get the rating score as well as the changes to the fans where it was noted that we actually increased our viewership this week as we had an increase of 80,000 fans taking us to 1,080,000. In terms of revenue, we had network deal payouts, ticket sales and ad revenue all of which gained us $59,000 to add to our budget. The most interesting thing about this screen though is the show notes as if you take a look at the right hand side we get updates from fans as well as superstars via social media in which the superstars that you booked in matches or even the superstars that you didn't choose to book will give updates on the show and how it went such as Bianca here saying that this wasn't the greatest fight tonight and that she had to hand it to Carmella while Roman Reigns reacts to Xavier Woods promo telling him to try repeating those words to him next week. One of the good things about this section is that it also gives you some hints as to how you should book your matches going forward so that Roman Reigns tweet it could be a hint to try doing the promo again next week to see how that goes whilst other updates note that Finn Balor and John Cena were an incredible tag team therefore you might want to think about booking them as a tag team more often. As we hit accept, we're rewarded with the health spa card that was a result of completing the commissioner goals. So each week that you complete one of these goals, you'll be rewarded with a card at the end of the show. Switching over to Raw's results, here we get the same kind of breakdown for the Raw show so we can see how well they did as well as any notes that they got from social media. Finally, we get the ranking screen which shows the rankings after week one of my GM, which shows that our show, Smackdown, was top as although the shows both did the same amount of star ratings for their matches, we gained more fans and we made more money. So with week one complete, that's where I'm going to leave things, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of what you can expect from the mode. And if you want to learn more, then stay tuned to the channel as I will be sharing more info on it later, along with my initial impressions, both in regards to my GM and the game in general. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss it. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself an awesome day. I'll catch you later.